Hi. About a year ago, I posted a, a video uh, in which I asked people to help us crowdfund, to give us money, basically, to do research into the pesticides in garden centre plants, specifically the plants that are sold to help pollinators, bee-friendly plants. Um, so a year on, uh, the results are out. We've done done the research. So many thanks to the people that uh, that gave us money. We raised about eight thousand pounds, which is fantastic. Um, and so uh, last year we were able to uh, buy a bunch of garden centre plants. We specifically targeted those on the list that the Royal Horticultural Society um, has posted, which is a list of bee-friendly or pollinator-friendly plants. They call them perfect for pollinators. And we mostly bought plants that actually had that logo on them, or they had some other bee-friendly logo. Um, and we, we screened them for pesticides, which is fiddly work. Um, uh, we, we extracted the nectar and the pollen, and we looked in the leaves, and we looked to see what um, pesticides were in the different plants. Um, excuse the bit of grass blowing in the way. Um, and the sad, sad news is, although perhaps not entirely surprising, um, is that the, the, the lovely plants that you might buy from your local garden centre, the idea being you, you buy them because you want them to provide food and attract lots of lovely bees and butterflies and so on to your garden, the fact is that most of them contain pesticides. Um, so so the, the broad figure, 94% of the plants we sampled had at least some pesticides in them. 88% um, of them had fungicides in them, which you might not be too concerned about, but isn't so good. 79% um, of them had one type of insecticide or more in them. Insecticides obviously uh, kill insects, which is definitely not what you want in your perfect for pollinator plant. Uh, so if we just break that down, just sorry to bore you with the details, but of the 79% the with insecticides, 72% of all the plants we surveyed, there's a bumblebee, 72% um, of the plants we surveyed contained uh, neonicotinoids, which are insecticides that uh, are widely linked to bee declines. Um, and then there were some others, there were 10% of them had organophosphates in them. Now organophosphates are insecticides that were developed by, in Germany in the Second World War um, to kill people, they're nerve agents. Currently estimated to kill about um, 200,000 people a year around the world by accidental misuse and poisoning. And they're in the pretty flowers that you might want to buy from your local garden centre. There are also, uh, I think, 6% of the plants had pyrethroids in them, which is another class of insecticide, very toxic to bees. Um, so none of this is really good news um, if you like shopping in your local garden centre. Um, we bought them from a range of different mainstream retailers, uh, common household names, or, uh, big shops that have national chains that sell flowers, and they were all equally bad. Um, you might say, well, were there enough insecticides to actually do any harm? It's certainly true that modern um, analytical techniques are very sensitive and sometimes you're tracing pretty tiny amounts of pesticide. But let me put it like this, the, um, the neonicotinoid insecticides that we detected, some of them were, in some plants, were at ten times the concentration typically found in an arable crop like oilseed rape. Um, and there's been lots of research done on the effects of their use in farming on bees and the strong consensus is that when they're used on the flowering crop the concentrations are sufficient to be harmful to the bees. Well, if you've got ten times as much in the stuff you're putting in your garden then that strikes me as, as unacceptable, particularly if you've paid good money for plants that are supposed to be perfect for pollinators. Um, there is nothing perfect for pollinators about a plant full of insecticide. So it seems to me things need to change. I, I would have to question whether trading standards uh, are being adhered to. Calling something perfect for pollinators when it's full of insecticides seems misleading to say the least to me. Um, I'd love to see the Royal Horticultural Society say that if any nursery, garden centre, retailer wants to use their perfect for pollinator logo that they 
have to guarantee the plants are free of insecticide. The perils of balancing your camera on a fence post. Bear with me. And bear with the plants waving around. Uh, so, uh, yeah, RHS, I, I think, could do something here that would really help. Uh, in the meantime, I have a suggestion, um, which is that if you want to grow pretty flowers in your garden to feed the bees and the butterflies, which is a fantastic thing to do, and I would encourage everyone to do it, and I do it, um, but maybe don't buy established plants from your local garden centre. There are lots of other ways to get hold of plants. There are organic garden centres and the RHS have published a list of those. Some of them are online so you can mail order stuff in. Um, uh, or grow plants from seed. That's pretty safe I think. Uh, as far as I'm aware the seeds on sale in garden centres tend to be free of insecticides and other pesticides and even if they are, they are there are traces of them in the seed. By the time you've grown a plant, my strong hunch would be that the concentrations would be negligible. Or better still, talk to your neighbours, plant swap with your friends, take cuttings from their plants, take offshoots, runners and so on. It's so easy to cultivate plants. Um, and if you do that, it's completely green, it's environmentally friendly, there's no plastic pots involved, no peat-based compost, you're just um, propagating some plants that thrive in your local area. By far the easiest thing to do. So there are alternatives and I, I would urge you to use them um, until uh, or unless um, the garden centre chain cleans up its act. Thank you for listening.